Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of three globular, globular amphora individuals from the town of Kosice on the border of Slovakia and Poland. Uh, these are Neolithic European individuals, let's get into the video. This is Mary, she's got blue eyes with a neighbor center, Greek shaped nose and brown hair, she's actually got wavy hair texture and Estonian, so European facial morphology. She has blue eye haplotype 1, but she is heterozygous for BH2, blue eye haplotype 2. And this is actually the reason that YSEC is depicting her with brown eyes. Uh, that's because heterozygous in BH2 is gonna lead to a brown eye prediction with YSEC. Um, now, if you look at her genotypes in SLC45A2, uh, SLC2485, Keto G, Asip, uh, you get the idea that she probably has white skin because she has two the route variants and all the SLC45A2 variations and two the route variants and all the Keto G and SLC2485 variations that have to do with skin tone. So she's pretty light in terms of pigmentation. Now we're moving on to Alice. Alice also has blue eyes with a neighbor center, although a much lighter shade. Uh, she's also got Greek shaped nose, but she's got blonde hair in place of brown, which was Maddie's prediction. Uh, when it comes to uh, morphology, facial morphology, she's also quite European in her facial morphology. 90% like of Estonian eye shape. And for hair shape, she's predicted to have straight hair with my hair ID tool. She has um, blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2 and blue eye haplotype 3 homozygous for all. And she does not have blue eye haplotype 4. So it's pretty fair to say that she's a very light color individual. Uh, and she also has two uh, derived variants in the IRF force variation that I highlighted in red that has to do with uh, blue eyes and pale skin and uh, red hair. It's a very common mutation in European hunter-gatherers and I was a little bit surprised to see it um, in a homozygous state in this individual. Another thing that's super interesting about Alice is she actually doesn't have any derived variants in the main G variation that has to do with skin tone. So um, this would mean she has dark skin, but if you couple that together with all the other genotypes she has, she definitely does not have dark skin, she just has this one exotic genotype in Keto G. And finally, here is James, he also has blue eyes with an amber center, although an even lighter shade than Alice, uh, Greek shaped nose just like the other two, and blonde hair. Uh, he's actually predicted to have curly hair with my hair ID, and he's predicted to have Middle Eastern eye shape, so Middle Eastern facial morphology uh, with my eye shape predictor too, but uh, Middle Eastern, European, in terms of facial morphology, they look kind of the same, the only difference is coloring, and his coloring is definitely very European. Um, so he's a very European looking guy, he's got blue eye haplotype 1 and 2 and 3, the whole package, does not have BH4. Uh, once again, he has the same genotype in Keto G that leads to darker skin as Alice, very exotic genotype, uh, but if you Look at that together in the context of everything else that he has. Uh, he definitely does not have dark skin, he just has this one exotic variant. For the GED match portion of the video, we're going to be using Mary's results. The other two individuals score similar to her, but I'm just going to use her because what's the point of showing all three? It's just going to take up more time. And Mary's file is the highest coverage file of the three. Uh, this is what she scores with Eugene's K13. With the Oracle, she's closest to Spanish from Andalusia. Andalusia, to my understanding, is the very southernmost point in Spain. And she's getting more as a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque. That's the closest... Uh, model for her, a mixture of Sardinian and Basque. Both of these people have very low in the European heritage. This is what she scores with MDLP K11 Modern. Here you can see she is scoring quite a lot of Caucasus. She's scoring 7% EHG, which is really meant to represent Caucasus specific drift. So she does have some Caucasus drift with this calculator, but uh, not, not so much that it would matter. You know, still the first model for her is Anatolian Neolithic plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. Uh, you don't really see any Caucasus here in the Oracle. And this is what she scores with Pan DNA LK10. And as you can see, once again, there is a little bit of Caucasus admixture here. Um, this calculator is capturing 4% Caucasus hunter-gatherer admixture, but it's still, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Still closest to Basque from, Sp Basque, Basque from Spain, followed by Spanish, followed by Sardinian with the Oracle, and actually getting more, once again, as a mixture of Basque plus Sardinian. Uh, that's because both of these groups have very little in the European ancestry. Uh, they're all very European farmer, and Basques are a little bit more Western hunter-gatherer, but they're both very European farmer in origin. Uh, this is what she scores with Pan DNA LK12. Uh, as you can see, she is scoring 31% European hunter-gatherer admixture. This is where she gets her phenotype from, and the other two, the other, um, two individuals, they also get their phenotype from the European hunter-gatherers, of course, not from the farmers. With the Oracle, she's getting more as a mixture of Basque from Spain plus Berber, I don't know why that is, or Basque plus Sardinian. And this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. 
Pretty typical result for any European farmer. You can note the complete lack of ancestral North Eurasian. Even Sardinians score more A and E than this individual. I think for Sardinians the average is like 8 or 9%. Uh, with the oracle, she's closest to Basque. That's because of her uh, large amount of Northern ancestry or hunter-gatherer admixture. And because of the hunter-gatherer admixture, she's actually getting more as a mixture of Sardinian plus SHG or Sardinian plus Matala. So she's more hunter-gatherer, she's more Northern than Sardinians. And finally, this is what Mary scores with Giderosi K3. Um, as you can see, she's very West Eurasian, uh, very white um, and... In fact, whiter than me because I score like 85 or 86% West Eurasian here. Now we'll be taking a look at their admixture with my trade predictor tool, which is on my, both on my website and on my GitHub. Let's begin with, um, who are we going to begin with? We're going to begin with Mary. Because she's the one whose GED match I showed you. It's going to prompt us to enter a file name. Okay, we're going to enter M. M for Mary. Uh, so Mary got Met Met genotype in Compt. So she's got Warrior genotype in Compt and Warrior genotype in MAOA. Would you look at that? So she's definitely got more dopamine than what's typical. Uh, better at attention and motivation tasks. Uh, problems with some strength resiliency. More dopamine accumulating in the system. And is this a problem for her? Well, no, not really, because she's heterozygous for the no go learner variant in DRD2 preferential proliferation, so she does not have uh, more dopamine D2 receptors, and she actually has AG genotype in TAC1, uh, which means she has one A1 allele in TAC1, which greatly lowers the availability of dopamine D2 receptors. So it's not a big problem. Her having uh, Warrior genotype in Compt and MAOA is not going to be a, an issue for her in her life because she's got something to account for that. She's got something to make up uh, if you look at her genotype in DRD2. Uh, what about 5-HTTLPR? Nope, does not have long form 5-HTTLPR. She's got short form 5-HTTLPR. Just like all you guys watching, all of you people have short form 5-HTTLPR except for like 10% who have long form uh, which protects you from uh, depression. And it's a super Northern European, it's a super Nordic trait to have, uh, to have the long form 5-HTTLPR. And she does not have this variation for, uh, does, does not have any derived variants in this variation of MCM6, but she does have one derived variant in this variation of MCM6 for European lactose persistence, which is pretty interesting. I'm not sure which one is the, the most important one. I think it's this one. That's the, the main one, uh, the most important variation for uh, lactose persistence. And this just kind of comes together, but I don't know. So she's heterozygous here which is kind of interesting. Uh, she's got GG in this variation of OXTR, which means two variants for higher levels of empathy, not a sociopath. And um, is there anything interesting here? Okay, so she's got CG here for hemochromatosis. She has one copy of the H63D variant for hemochromatosis. Very interesting stuff. Uh, I actually have two copies, and this might be the earliest, well, I don't know, I, I don't have very good memory, but this might be the earliest individual uh, with hemochromatosis copy from all the people I've seen thus far. Um, no micro P, no micro P, what about Alzheimer's? No risk alleles here. TC here, which means one APOE2 allele, so she's probably going to have a pretty high risk of Alzheimer's too because of this genotype right here. And... Uh, all that we can all we can ignore all of this. Now let's get let's get down to polygenic risk scores. Okay, so for polygenic risk scores, she's got a super low risk score for schizophrenia, much lower than what's typical for uh, Northern Europeans. She's got a super high risk score for diabetes. How come? Wait, how come? Why is that? So maybe here, here. Here, okay, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. There is some other variants that contribute as well that aren't shown on the screen. So yeah, I can see how she's got such a high score for diabetes. And for Alzheimer's, I've already explained why that is. That's because she carries the APOE2 allele. So she's got a high score for Alzheimer's, diabetes, and very low score for schizophrenia. Let's reset the scores. And let's see somebody else. Let's see somebody else from that group. Alice. Let's get, let's get down to Alice. All right, guys, this is Alice. I kind of went on a rambling spree, so I had to delete uh, this portion of the video and just refilm it. <laughs> it's not good. But um, Alice got Warrior genotype in Compt, so she's got a bit less dopamine in her system, a bit quicker dopamine reuptake. But 
that's coming together with TT genotype in this variation of MAOA, which is another enzyme, enzyme that breaks down dopamine. So overall, uh, this genotype kind of counteracts this genotype. So she might have uh, more of the combed enzyme, but less of the MAOA enzyme, and both of these enzymes break down dopamine in the, uh, in the brain. Uh, when it comes to DRD2, she's got two no golden variants variance and DRD2 pro variance in pro variation, so she is a little bit protected from certain mental illnesses. And... Um, Okay, so she's got CC in this variation of 5-HTTLPR, which actually leads to long-form 5-HTTLPR and decreased risk of depression. Would you look at that? That's pretty interesting. So she's got CC here. Uh, now, I'm heterozygous here, so I only have one variant, and one variant is enough uh, to give you long-form 5-HTTLPR, but she actually has two variants, which is pretty cool. And as I've said previously, this is a very Northern European, like, very European and specifically Northern European trait to have. Uh, does not carry of the, any of the derived variants for European lactose persistence. And once again, not a sociopath, two variants for higher levels of empathy and OXTR. Uh, these two, we're just going to ignore them. They don't really matter all that much. Uh, for diabetes, CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Everything else we're going to find out when we look at the polygenic risk scores. For hemochromatosis, does not have any of the hemochromatosis variants. Right, does not have any. For Alzheimer's, no APOE2, no APOE2, so it does not have any of the Alzheimer's risk alleles in APOE gene. And no micro P, no micro P, you know what that is. I'm not going to spell that out for you because of the monetization. And let's get, let's see her polygenic risk scores. So, wow, that's crazy. Okay, so she's got literally 40 times less. <laughs> 40 times less risk of schizophrenia. That was typical for the average person. Uh... That's pretty significant, right? 40 times less than what's typical for the average Northern European and 30 times less than what's typical for the average African. Uh, she's got a super high odds of Alzheimer's, once again, I mean, not diabetes, excuse me, and low odds of Alzheimer's. Why is the diabetes so high? Let's scroll back. It's because of this. It's because of this. I don't see anything else. What about the fat gene? No fat gene variants. So there's something else. There's a couple other uh, variations that are not on the screen that contribute to these polygenic risk scores. Keep that in mind. So it's probably something that's not on the screen that contributed to this result. Now we're going to reset the scores and we're going to move on to our third individual who is James, right? James. Okay, James. I'm going to enter a name. Come on. Okay, James. All right, so James got GG in Combs Valmet variation. Once again, Valval genotype. Uh, what your genotype? TT in MAOA is R6323, uh, which is what your genotype in MAOA. So once again, these two genotypes, they kind of counteract each other. Uh, AG or 1 derived no gold or no variant and DRT2 pro in pro variation. And would you look at that? Would you look at that? Uh, AG genotype in TAC1. That's pretty interesting. So he also has the A1 allele in TAC1, uh, which leads to a significantly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Uh, and although you're not going to find information on this on SNPDA, I speculate that it would decrease the risk of schizophrenia because it makes sense. Why would it not? You know, it, it does what antipsychotics do. When you take antipsychotics, they uh, decrease the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites. So it's pretty much, having this genotype is pretty much like taking in type psychotics. So I think it would decrease uh, the likelihood of certain mental health issues. Um, and TT here, which leads to short form 5-HTTLPR, once again, does not have long form 5-HTTLPR. For lactose persistence, does not have any derived variants for European lactose persistence. For the empathy gene, this one's not genotype. We're going to ignore everything else. For diabetes, um, CC here, we once again sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, but this is sevenfold decrease not relative to the average. This is not sevenfold decrease compared to the average. This is sevenfold decrease compared to the opposite genotype. And most people have this CC here. Most people, if you if you run your file for my genome analyzer tool, you're gonna have CC here. Most likely. And maybe not, maybe not you, but uh, statistically speaking, most of you are gonna have CC here. For hemochromatosis, not a carrier for anything. For Alzheimer's, not a carrier for any of the APOE alleles. For miscellaneous section, no micro P once again. And finally, for albinism and atypical traits panel, let's see. Is there anything to show here? Does not have, does not have, does not have. 
does not have so it does not have any of the albinism mutations and uh, also does not have Melanesian blonde hair variants in tier 1. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's see the polygenic risk scores. Okay, so this individual has got 2.8 times the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans. So this is actually the only individual here who's got a somewhat high risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, they all had super high risk scores for diabetes. Why is that? Why is it so high? Interesting. What about fat gene variants? Okay, so there's two fat gene variants and this does contribute. So, um, but you know, not everything that's on the screen is included in the calculation for the polygenic risk scores. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, and once again, pretty low risk score for Alzheimer's. So that's pretty much all there is to know about these uh, genomes. Thanks for watching my video until the end. Uh, you can download them in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and goodbye.